Hey, what's up, guys? It's Scout Trout here live from Winter Park, Colorado. Uh, today we're going to talk about a little bit of stuff on video. Uh, let's put a face to everything you see in here. Um, it's been a little crazy lately. Twitter's blowing up. Uh, Deion Sanders has a lot of great stuff to say. Uh, hashtag Coach Prime. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that today because I'm going to do an article about it uh, on him and uh, Coach Joe Nixon as well, who also was a former Florida State Seminole and a very good coach in his own right. I love the stuff he says on Facebook. I love the stuff Coach Prime says on Twitter. Uh, I love the stuff my people have to chime in on it, like uh, Jared Pickens' father, Jamison Pickens. Um, Mr. Zimmerman had a great uh, thing he tweeted today about uh, Scout Trout and how uh, we're draining the swamp. Uh, I thought that was funny. Um, maybe I read an article, watched a video the other day. Maybe uh, sports media and media is becoming more fun and more interesting than the actual game. I don't know. Uh, I hope not. Um, maybe we need to make the game more interesting then. Uh, that's all I got to say about that. Um, let's go play in the mountains. Let's hit some trees. Let's get better. Let's let's just analyze things and become really, really good. Uh, that would make the game better. How about that? You know, Deion Sanders has some things to say, though. High school coaches, the best tool to attract kids is to send as many of the previous senior class to college. Parents desire their kids to have an opportunity of a better life than what they had. So if you can create a program to get kids to college, you will win in our ways. Coach Prime. Dad, um, I've been saying that for years. Hershey High School is a great example of that. Coach Youngs has been doing a heck of a job of getting kids to college uh, out of Hershey. Uh, I just like showing off his hard work and uh, the kids at Hershey's hard work, like the Markway Foster, Lloyd Murray, uh, got another up and coming one um, who's really going to do some big things. He's responsible for the Markway getting a lot of yards. Uh, Marquez Brana, uh, Martez Brana, uh, he's at Oklahoma Panhandle with uh, Joel Barbosa. We're going to talk a little bit about the NAI in a little bit in D2, the difference. Um, I'm going to do D2 rankings uh, soon. Uh, nationally, um, I already got them done. Just got to release them. It's all up here. Uh, Blake Sullivan's going to go off this year for Fort Hayes State. That's going to be fun to watch. I hope he's starting for four years. That would be just an amazing thing. Um, let's see. And then Coach Prime, here's another one I retweeted. I'm sick of these three, four, and five-star kids coming to these major camps, and they had not been taught a thing, but I can see the potential. There's potential in all of you. <laughs> Why do you think the emergence of the so-called trainer and 7-on-7 seven seven coach is so prevalent? Because high school coaches have pressure to win games and not teach kids the game. I mean, I'm not going to say it's like every high school coach. You know, I've, been, so I've talked to some real good ones the last few days um, out of Florida, Orlando. Um, actually played against them in high school out of Gloucester High when I went to Gloucester Catholic or Coach Brian Smart. Uh, I forget what school he said he was at, but uh, it's on my Facebook. He, um, you know, I've talked to some good high school coaches who are actually, you know, doing the right thing. Um, they actually are teaching so hard and coaching so hard. Sometimes they, you know, aren't thinking about the recruiting process and stuff like that because they're builders and they want to build their program and build their kids to a higher standard. Um, I think there is a lot of good high school coaches out there. It's like anything in America. It's 50-50, um, you know. 50% of them are just thinking about themselves and their job and moving up and the next best thing instead of staying in rooted and planted in what they're doing now. Um, like Coach Frost said uh, in his Big Ten uh, media day, you know, building a program takes constant gardening and watering, you know, and I love the verb that she uses for uh, Husker fans and you know, that Midwest culture of building, you know, and farming and, and agriculture and stuff like that. So I understood that in a way, um, in a sense, you know, that made more sense to me about Coach's Frost, uh, Coach Frost's theory and philosophy, which now I think a lot more highly of. Um, you know, there is a lot of a lot of hype, a lot of media stuff that can draw people different which ways, and uh, you know, UCF claiming they got a national championship and all that stuff. You know, there's a a place you got to do that. And Coach Frost is now in the right place to win a national championship. And he stated that in his Big Ten uh, conference uh, interview, which I'm going to talk about on Scout Trout. 
from Big Ten Media Day. The Big Ten, arguably, I've been watching videos, they got the best coaches, uh, arguably, in college football this year. So it's going to be fun to watch Big Ten football, and that's why I wanted to cover it a little bit this year, talk about it. Iowa, Kirk Ferentz, everybody always forgets about them. You know, they're always tough. Uh, every year it's built on stability, a lot of great things going there. Um, a little bit more back to back what Dion was saying, you know, I hear a lot of these college coaches every day saying these kids come in, you know, they're not ready to play. Red shirt goes on them right away. Um, you know, big athletic receivers that can't catch, uh, don't know how to create, you know, just easy, just proper little things that, um, you know, my dad learned when Terry Bradshaw was throwing 110 miles per hour and breaking wide receivers' hands. So they had, you know, dad um <laughs> broken bloody hands and they couldn't play so my dad would warm up Bradshaw because he didn't know how to throw a touch pass I mean just <laughs> through rifles like Marino my dad played with him as well at Pitt um, watching them guys throw the ball and how they operated uh, learning how to make it better quicker release uh, I love the mastering motions mastering your body um, there's little tiny things for every position that you can learn uh, but it's all going to start up here and uh, that's the basic philosophy of my training is to try and teach athletes how to master their mind, give them the tools to succeed in that aspect because there's a lot of people telling these kids no today. Uh, there's a lot of them that have all the potential in the world from watching the best athletes um, like Coach Prime, uh, like uh, aka Deion Sanders, um, like um, Joe Nixon when he played it, Florida State, the stuff he said was very uh, hit home for me. It's stuff I've been preaching for two, three years now, and I'm glad these guys, can, you know, with names can come out of the woodwork and, you know, preach the same type of philosophy uh, on building young men into being great athletes and being successful and being, uh, you know, college students and getting a free education, God willing, or just getting an education. You know, I learned a lot about walk-ons and how that system works. Um, I mean, like if you're in Iowa, get you can do farming. You know, you want to go to agriculture, uh, you can get walk-on scholarships uh, from a farming grant or something like that, and blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, you're on scholarship to play, not just play football, but go to school, and football is just an add-on to that. And you get to play for a great program, and knowing Kirk Ferentz and hearing where he comes from, he's going to start the best player in camp, whoever's playing the best, whoever is, you know, contributing to the team the best, whoever's doing their assignment the best. Whoever's picking up their blocks the best, whoever's, you know, running their routes, uh, all that stuff that he wants to see, um, that's who's going to play. So don't ever give up on your dreams. Uh, search for the government stuff. Uh, fill out your FAFSA. Y'all should be doing that first along with the clearinghouse stuff. Um, that should be number one because college coaches also, I mean, there's a number for everybody. And uh, I dealt with it when I was in school in Connecticut with Coach Eager. Um, big, you know, big help he was. He, he found me everything. You know, you're a full Pell qualifier. You're this, you're that. Boom, boom, boom. All of a sudden, that number came way down for that year I had to sit out after transferring up from D2 to D1. So um, that made it a lot easier, uh, a lot easier financial burden. I started my own company. I had, you know, $700 to go to school. Um, I ran a moving company with a lineman called Cheap Moves. You could rent a truck at U-Haul, hire the lineman. Uh, be creative, think outside the box. You're, you're in a city now you've never been to, but you play football and you can talk to people and there's fans. You could talk to if you're a good person, you can find work. Um, you know, I teach the kids, nothing's gonna be free in life. Um, I've had to pay just too much money really uh for a lot of different athletic events and so-called combines pro stuff this and that and then you go win it and you know nothing is what they said it was and all this you know agents and stuff like that just a whole bunch of other stuff instead of the game and who's the best and who's not and um once i've seen it matriculate down to the the youth through really just writers and media and stuff like that who are controlling stars and rankings and this and that and whatnot. Um, the number one question I would get after training a kid is how do I get stars? How do I get stars? How do I get stars? <laughs> so I started researching. 
this past year in Mississippi, when we were after the All-American game, I was so sick of kids asking me how they get stars, um, you know, because I had stars, and I didn't really pay attention to them. Back then, Rivals was kind of, I didn't even know what it was. Uh, my buddy Matt Siniscouchy told me one day in school, you're, you're ranked on Rivals.com, and I was like, I don't know what that is, and I looked it up, and I thought it was cool. You know, you see your name on there, blah, 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 with some stars next to your name. It didn't mean anything. In, no. It really didn't. I thought I was a five-star athlete, not a three-star kicker. So um, if you go read the article from Rivals, 340, you know, 340 bench press coming out of high school, 580 squat, 4540. That doesn't really sound like, you know, like it says, not your ordinary kicker. <laughs> but, um I, uh, you know, I took the cards that were dealt and did my best, um, even though I struggled with the kicking position a lot of times because I was a linebacker, high strung, running back, quarterback, just love to play the game of football. Um, as you can see in my videos that I do, like, that's just for fun. I'm not doing it to show off no more. I have millions of them. Um, you know, I go out and train and have fun up here because it's, it's refreshing. It's, you know, something that I love to do. So I love to teach, too, and how to do it the right way, how to have fun, but also how to get better up here. I mean, when you become a better athlete, if you're a pocket quarterback, you come up here for four or five months, you're going to turn into a dual threat like that. And, you know, that's highly more used at the next level in a system like Coach Frost um, in Nebraska, who, uh, you know, like I said, I can't complain with the way he handled that uh, media conference. Uh, a lot of questions about being, you know, the QB guy that he says he is. I believe he is that guy now. Um, he did win a national championship, uh, you know, and sent Tom Arsburn off a winner in 97. Um, just a all around, you know, that's, that's my head coach now. Like if I wanted to play uh, at a high level or Kirk Ferentz or Jim Harbaugh, James Franklin, I mean, there's a list goes on and on and on and on and on, which I'm uh, extremely excited about uh, for the Big Ten um, conference. Uh, you know, even Michigan State, uh, Dan Tony, um, great, great group of coaches overall this year, and um, really a good outlook for the kids. Um, I'm previewing, I have a preview ready to go for Colorado football. Uh, they look good coming this year. Um, going to be an interesting, you know, uh, season for them. Um, but, you know, more on that, that's just for fun. When we're down and we don't have a lot to write about, we're going to write about teams and what they got going on this year. Um, Do Perez, uh, Scouting report that I just wrote went for like 1,400 uh, views in like overnight, which we're really happy about for him. He's one heck of an uh, offensive weapon and a defensive weapon, just an overall great athlete. Uh, you know, all in all, like I said, with the, the altitude training and stuff, um, it can be done anywhere really here. I go down, when I'm going down to Boulder, uh, you know, Fort Collins area, um, Loveland, uh there's fields everywhere for the technique stuff. And then if you want to come up here and do some stuff too, we can do that. But um, the footwork training, the, I mean, it just enhances everything. I do a lot of rock stuff, um, you know, a lot of stuff that's going to make you better, uh, make you test yourself, make you uh, way better than you came. Because uh, when you go back down, everything gets way easier. Um, it's not, you don't got to use as much effort. Um, you don't have to, uh, you know that saying, like, it looked effortless when he threw that ball. He does it with such, you know, it doesn't look like he tried very hard. You know, that's that's what we're trying to get to, um, where you're just throwing the ball or catching the ball, running so fluently, and so but so fast, it just looks like so effortless. And when I've seen the best runners and the best sprinters, too, I mean, a lot of times they look, you know, like they're so relaxed um it's better to make this fun than to put so much pressure on ourselves because of outside sources and society as a whole putting all this pressure on you on this pressure on you to get this scholarship you got to remember that you're playing football and it's a game 
and your body operates 110% better if you're focused and relaxed and in your place. But how do we find that place with all these distractions? That's what you got to work on. And that's what we try and guide you on. But all in all, that's going to come down between, I forget who said it, one of the golfers, the, the three-inch course between your head. Mine's a little bigger because I got a big head. I always wear an XL helmet. But um, that's what it's going to come down to. It's going to come down to what's between your ears, uh, what you can do with it. You know, once you master your mind, you know, now you got to – Take it to the next level and master your body. And I, I know the athletes that can do that are the ones that are doing, you know, the big things at the next level. Um, they're the ones that, you know, can pretty much pick up any system, pick up any style of coaching, pick up, you know, any type of scheme, any defense that presents itself, any offense that presents itself as your linebacker, uh, any of that. I teach my linebackers to play like – everything the quarterback's taught because if you know what he's about to do and you're in his head and you know what his process is then you're going to have a better chance of jumping that ball for six or being there you know when a tight end's catching it and laying them out and then or you know being in the hole you know before the running back's even there ready to stuff them um reading your keys little tiny things um that you know are missed in today's football a lot of times like prime said but um there's not a lot of guys also it's been missed for so long that it's just kind of matriculated down to now it's just so watered down. And I think that's what guys like Prime really got a problem with um, when they played at such a high level and then they seen the level of coaching and they had coaches that got them, to, you know, helped them get to that level and aided them and assisted them. And then they're seeing today that, you know, it just isn't the same. Um, it doesn't exist like that. So, uh, all in all, because of a lot of the reasons he said, a lot of the outside pressures, a lot of the outside sources, a lot of that, and that's now also a head coach's job. You got to learn how to eliminate distractions because nobody taught you really how to. And then now you got all this pouring in. Now all that matters is winning. And donations to the fifth quarter club. Or some fund. <laughs> Winning is not everything. Not when you look at these kids. Winning is them going to college on a full scholarship and succeeding, get a free education and going on in life and doing great things with their lives and changing other people's lives. And, and that's winning. Like the scoreboard will reflect that if you're willing to put forth the effort in the first part and that's the kid the student athlete each individual because if you get each individual right now the team's going to be perfect and it's going to know how to work as a unit it's going to know what's right right and wrong um it's going to know what's best for the core nucleus of uh you know your team and uh all in all, that's going to help you in the end of the day, you know, achieve victory. Um, because happy people win. Unhappy people, miserable people, negative people lose. Pretty simple. I mean, it's your mentality. You either got it or you don't. Those who got it, Deion Sanders, guys like that. You've seen what they did. I mean, it's not, it's not like some magical theory that, you know, I looked up on Google, I typed in my name, it says, Scott Travis has keys to success in football next to it on Google. Well, the keys to success start with yourself and being successful as a person and as an individual and as a coach and as a life, you know, all that stuff, not just being successful in football. You're not going to be successful in football unless you're successful in the other areas that I just preached about for about 20 minutes. So all in all, remember that that's the keys to success. 
is being a successful individual first. Then you can go be a successful football player. Until that happens, you can do all you want on the field. All you want. Look at that cow back there. It looks like a nasty pulling guard. <laughs> but um, that's all I got to say today. Uh, I think this is a good learning lesson today, but I'm going to put it on here uh, on the article I'm about to do. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, uh, Scout Trout YouTube, Scout Trout Elite. We'll be doing a lot more uh, talks like this uh, throughout the season, trying, um, you know, put some light on some things for our athletes, for coaches, uh, you know, across the nation, uh, across the world. I have right now 40 countries listening to the radio show. Um, so that is cool. That will, uh, you know, hopefully enhance coaching worldwide but um you know i'm more uh, inclined on what's going on right here at home i don't have to go to another country um i think that there's a lot of work to be done here on the culture on what's you know the right way to get to the top get super bowl rings like mr sanders and you know all the guys that are tweeting a lot of great knowledge um, you know, that I've been saying for a while and, um, you know, it's refreshing. Uh, thank you. Keep up the good work, guys. Uh, keep up the good work, Scout Trout guys. You guys all look great this season. Looks like it's going to be the year of the quarterback again. <laughs> and D-tackles. We always got the best D-tackles, best linemen. Because we know that's where the game starts, up front. If we ain't got them, we ain't, we're going to get our head or running around like Manziel, just throwing it up and hoping Mike Evans is on the other side. Um, you know, <laughs> that's how it goes. Um, you need the, the, you know, stability up front. And then once you get that, you know, you need, you know, you're running back all the pieces, all the pieces work together. Remember that. And, uh, you know, let's go linebackers. We're always linebacker you. Let's go Braden Spicer this year out of Oklahoma State, one of the best I've seen last year. That man is just spot on. Looks like Clay Matthews in the making for Coach Knowles out there. Came over from Duke this year. Out there, Oak State. I'm going to preview them next. All right, we out.